Nero, the Roman Empire's fifth emperor, is a name that has become synonymous with extravagance, tyranny, and just a touch of madness. Born Lucius Domitius Ahenobarbus in 37 AD, Nero had a rather tumultuous childhood. His mother, Agrippina the Younger, was basically the poster child for ambitious stage moms. She schemed and plotted to secure her son's place on the throne, even allegedly poisoning Emperor Claudius to speed up the process. Agrippina's machinations paid off, and Nero was adopted by Claudius. When Claudius died under suspicious circumstances, Nero, at the tender age of 16, became the emperor of the Roman Empire. His early reign was surprisingly stable, thanks in large part to the influence of his tutor and advisor, the philosopher Seneca. During his early years as emperor, Nero actually showed some promise. He reduced taxes, promoted public works projects, and even had a flair for diplomacy, successfully negotiating peace with the Parthian Empire. But as the saying goes, absolute power corrupts absolutely, and it wasn't long before Nero's reign took a turn for the bizarre. In 64 AD, Rome was lit up like a birthday cake, and not in a good way. A massive fire engulfed the city, destroying everything in its path. Rumors began to circulate that Nero himself had started the fire to clear land for his new palace. Some even claimed that he played the lyre and sang while Rome burned. Talk about a memorable karaoke night. After the fire, Nero embarked on an ambitious rebuilding project, and by ambitious, we mean completely over the top. His crowning glory was the Domus Aurea, or the Golden House, a palace so opulent that it would make even the most extravagant Hollywood celebrities blush. Gold, ivory, and precious gems adorned every surface of the Domus Aurea. The palace grounds featured lush gardens, artificial lakes, and even a 120-foot-tall statue of Nero himself, known as the Colossus of Nero. Because nothing says humble ruler like a giant statue of yourself, right? But Nero's architectural extravagance didn't stop there. He even had a room in his palace that rotated day and night, simulating the Earth's movement. Because who needs a regular old bedroom when you can sleep in a spinning one? Nero wasn't exactly known for his kindness towards Christians. In fact, he used them as scapegoats for the great fire and ordered their persecution. Christians were crucified, burned alive, and even used as human torches to light up Nero's gardens. It's safe to say that Nero wouldn't be winning any humanitarian awards. The persecution of Christians under Nero was so severe that it even got a mention in the Bible. The apostles Peter and Paul were both said to have been martyred during Nero's reign, cementing Nero's place as one of history's great villains. Despite his cruelty, Nero fancied himself a bit of a Renaissance man. He loved to act, recite poetry, and even compete in the Olympic Games. However, his artistic pursuits were often met with eye rolls and snickers from the Roman elite, who thought such activities were beneath an emperor. Nero, however, was undeterred and continued to grace the stage with his presence. In fact, Nero was so passionate about his artistic endeavors that he once allegedly had a man executed for falling asleep during one of his performances. Talk about a tough crowd. He was known for his lavish banquets, where guests were treated to exotic delicacies like flamingo tongues and peacock brains. He even had a special room in his palace dedicated to a goddess who was supposed to help him digest his meals. Talk about a divine case of indigestion. But Nero's eccentricities didn't stop at his dining habits. He was also known for his bizarre sexual proclivities, including a reported incident where he had a young boy castrated and then married him in a public ceremony. And you thought your love life was complicated. As Nero's behavior became increasingly erratic and his rule more oppressive, the Roman people and political elite began to grow restless. In 68 AD, the governor of Gaul, Gaius Julius Vindex, led a revolt against Nero. Although Vindex was eventually defeated, his rebellion sparked a series of uprisings across the empire, led by disgruntled governors and generals who had simply had enough of Nero's shenanigans. Faced with the prospect of a very unpleasant end, Nero fled Rome in disguise, seeking refuge in the countryside. But his days were numbered, and he knew it. On June 9, 68 AD, with the walls closing in and no escape in sight, Nero decided to take a permanent bow. 
With the help of his secretary, Epaphroditus, he took his own life, allegedly uttering the famous last words, what an artist dies in me. And thus, the curtain fell on the reign of one of Rome's most notorious emperors. Nero's death marked the end of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, a family that had ruled the Roman Empire for almost a century. If you enjoyed this wild ride through the life of Nero, be sure to like and subscribe to Conquest Icons for more irreverent takes on history's most iconic figures. Join us as we explore the strange, the shocking, and the downright absurd stories that make history so endlessly fascinating.